Wir sind heute auf der Vitafood in Genf und wir werden versuchen, ganz tolle Informationen mal zu finden über Spirulina, über allgemein, über Astaxanthin. Wir haben gleich einige Termine und werden hier mit der Kamera versuchen, einige Dinge mal aufzuzeichnen, um sie der Öffentlichkeit einfach zu zeigen. Bis dann. Ciao. Ja, we make one. So, ich bin bei Bob Capelli, bei der Firma Cyanotech, die größte Firma der Welt für die Produktion von Spirulina. Und ich kenne sie seit 20 Jahren und arbeite schon lange mit ihnen zusammen und bekomme auch die Originalprodukte von denen. So ist ein, ein, ein sehr gutes Vertrauensverhältnis. Wir kennen uns schon sehr lange und ich werde Ihnen einige Fragen stellen, ihm einige Fragen stellen. Okay. So. Hi Bob. Hi, how are you? Quite fine. I'm very happy to see you again. Yes, always okay. a pleasure. Oh, everything is uh, hang loose, even in Germany now. Okay. <laughs> hang loose in Hawaii. Yeah. Okay, Bob, tell me about the difference between um, Hawaiian Spirulina and Bio, Bio Spirulina, certified organic Spirulina, because we have a lot of certified organic Spirulina from China and from India. And uh, sometimes my, my customers like to know what the difference is. Okay, there's, there's actually a lot of differences. Now, first of all, Cyanotech, the producer of Hawaiian spirulina, was the very first company in the entire world to ever produce any sort of microalgae organically, bio. This was way back in the 1990s. And we were certified organic for our spirulina for several years, for about 15 years, until 2005, they changed the rule about what kind of nitrogen you could use. So we're still producing a bio spirulina, organically certified spirulina, we just can't put that on our label. Now all the new producers of organic spirulina, what they're doing is they're taking organic sources of nitrogen that are not the natural way that spirulina grows in the wild. Now, spirulina has grown for over three billion years in the wild using the same exact sort of fer fer nitrogen source that we currently use. But they're called, their product is now called certified organic because they use either animal manure or compost tea. And when you use these products, we did a lot of research on this before we decided not to change our source of nitrogen. You, can, you destroy the levels of nutrients, have much lower levels of nutrients, the things that give you health in the spirulina, and you can have contamination. So you can have uh, high levels of bacteria, high levels of heavy metal. We made a big decision. We're not going to be certified organic, although the product still is organic, but we're not going to reduce the quality of our product. Okay. Very good idea. Okay, thank you for this information. Um, I think you are even one of the biggest uh, producer in the world for Astaxanthin. That's true. And I know that uh, to to grow this uh, this this uh, algae, what's the name, Hematococcus pluvialis, is very complicated. Much more so than spirulina. Yes. Very yeah. Complicated. And uh, it is even um, um, very hard with the weather sometimes that it will not grow so much as you really need. Unfortunately, that's okay. true. But what is the, the very best on, on astaxanthin? Well, astaxanthin, like you say, is very, very difficult to work with. It's hard to grow, it's hard to dry, it's hard to extract, it's hard to package properly, it's hard to encapsulate. And if you don't take care in every step of the process to prevent exposure to oxygen, What happens is the astaxanthin oxidizes and it won't hurt you, it's not a safety concern, but it becomes inert. What that means is it's no longer working as an antioxidant, it's neutral. So it doesn't give you any of the health benefits. So we've seen many, many products. In fact, we've tested 15 different commercial products and only three of them had the exact amount of astaxanthin that it said on the label. 12 of them had well less than what they say in the label because it had oxidized. So you have to be very careful in every single step in the process. Now here's a product on the market currently in Germany. They call this a six milligram astaxanthin. Now first of all, if this was six milligram astaxanthin, this would be much, much darker red. 
This would not be this color. So what's happened is they put this into a what they call a vegetarian gel cap, or I'm sorry, a vegetarian uh, uh, capsule, and it's oxidized because this capsule does not prevent the seepage, the, the oxygen from entering into it. And what happens is now we have a product that is not going to have nearly what it should of astaxanthin uh, that it says on the label in the product. And people, frankly, probably are not going to get a health benefit from this product. Does it mean that uh, astaxanthin, when it's in, in powder, condition that it will oxidize uh, very quickly, that it will, it's not safe for ox oxidation? Uh, yeah, again, it, it's safe to consume, it won't hurt you, okay. but it's not, it's not protected from oxidizing. Okay. Okay. And so I, we highly recommend against this, this okay. method of delivering uh, astaxanthin, mm -hmm. we highly recommend a gel cap. The gel cap, the astaxanthin is suspended in oil, so the oil itself is pr protecting the astaxanthin. Okay. Secondarily, it's mixed with a little bit of vitamin E, and vitamin E is very good for helping to protect the astaxanthin. Okay. And the last thing, it's inside of a gel cap that's 100% sealed. You can't open it like I just did with this capsule, so it's very, very protective of the astaxanthin content. Okay. Uh, what is the, the biggest um, um, effect of, of astaxanthin in the human body? Astaxanthin is an extremely powerful antioxidant, and it's also a safe and natural, effective anti-inflammatory. So with these two major focus of astaxanthin's activity, it has a great effect on many different parts of our body. For example, very good for people that have joint pain, muscle pain, uh, soreness in their, in their tendons, very helpful for painful situations to increase mobility and to decrease the pain. Uh, very, very good for our skin. It helps to prevent damage from the sun, from the UV damage to the skin, from the inside out. It also helps to improve the quality of the skin, make it a little bit more beautiful. It, it, it reduces the fine wrinkles. It also helps to increase the skin moisture and elasticity. Uh, I, think, I think you take it every day, huh? I, I take it okay. every, for 13 years. Okay. Also very, very good for eyes okay. and brain mm -hmm. because the antioxidant and anti-inflammatory action can actually cross the barrier and get into our oh, brains okay. and eyes. And there's several other things. But the other thing a lot of people like it for is for energy and sports and mm -hmm. you know, athletes. They love it because you know, especially endurance athletes, they get a much better, longer workout. So very good for athletes. Okay. So, thank you very much for this interview. Oh, my pleasure. And uh, wish you a good time, and I hope to see you soon in Hawaii. Very much so, yes, thank you. Bye.